The Chicago Bears win total has officially been set. So let's talk about this, people. What is going on, y'all? Fox Sports Talk back at it with another video talking, of course, some NFL here to talk about the Chicago Bears and here to talk about their projected win total, which has been set by the odds maker. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys that number. Before I do, if you guys are new to the channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below. Please make sure you guys... Go ahead and do that and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. All right, so here we go. The odds makers have set the win total. So drum roll, please. It is eight and a half. Eight and a half is the win total projected by Vegas to go over or under for the Chicago Bears. You decide, right? And so to me, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my opinion on what, whether or not the Bears will go over or under. Now, let's just start with this. And then we'll get into a little bit of an exercise we'll do. The Bears team is much improved from last season. And they won seven games last year. All right, so you guys may know the direction I'm headed here, but let's just talk about it real quick. We went ahead and added Keenan Allen to our wide receiver room. In free agency, you went ahead and you upgraded the secondary, uh, you know, with Kevin Byard. I know Getty Jackson was a great man, but he was a little over the hill. Uh, you upgraded the backup tight end two with Gerald Everett. Uh, you upgraded your center spot with Bates and with Coleman Shelton. So the offensive line got a bit of an upgrade. Uh, you went ahead and you got uh, an upgrade in the running back room with DeAndre Swift. So you have added uh, some major pieces to this team through free agency. We haven't even gotten to the draft yet where you'll get your projected quarterback one in Caleb Williams. And you might get another wide receiver, or you could get a, an edge rusher, which is also a need. So all of the holes on this roster that were present are either filled up or are going to be filled up. And so when we're talking about a seven-win team last year, logically speaking, you add all these pieces, they should improve, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and, and state my case here that, yeah, we're going over, all right? Now, you could end at eight wins and still be under, but still improve from the seven-win total. But I'm going to go ahead and say that the Bears uh, do improve over this eight-and-a-half mark. And a large part of that isn't just the roster, right? Because the roster is going to be much improved. But a large part of that is the schedule. So here's the exercise that I was going to uh, do with you guys. So let's go ahead and do it. Here is the schedule for the Chicago Bears for next year. And actually, I shouldn't say schedule. These are just the opponents. The schedule, the order will be set later on. But we know the opponents. So let's just do a little exercise here, right? Wins and losses. So here are the opponents, home and road. So I'm going to go through this and, uh, you know, give my best shot at this. So at home, the Chicago Bears play, obviously, our three division opponents, the Lions, Packers, Vikings. I'm going to say this to you guys, all right? I think with the Lions, we split against them next year. We should have beat them twice last year, both times. And that was with Justin Fields on a worse roster. So I think we should be able to at least split with them again. I'm going to give Lions the credit because they're the division winners and they went to the conference championship. So like they deserve a little bit of credit there. So I'm not going to say, oh yeah, we're sweeping them. Let's call it a split. The Packers, look, let's just be conservative, even more realistic if you guys want. Let's say we lose both to the Packers, right? Until we beat the Packers, you don't want to count any dubs against them. So, and we lost to the Packers both times last year, miserably, if you will. And I hope Caleb changes that. He comes in and we, he beats the Packers. I would love that. But look, just from a prediction standpoint, let's be realistic. Let's say we lose both to the Packers, all right? So we got um, at home, I'm going to say we beat the Lions and, and then against the Packers, we lose. And then for the Vikings game, I'm going to say that we beat the Vikings now. They lost Kirk Cousins in free agency. Wouldn't know what's going to happen with Justin Jefferson. I presume they keep him. But the Vikings roster has gotten worse. Well, they've gotten worse. All right. So defense not very good. They lost Daniel Hunter. So, like, I think the Vikings will rest this year. Okay. So I, I'm going to go ahead and say we pick up uh, uh, two wins against them. We sweep them. All right. So it's a, it's a dub against the Vikings. Then we get to the Rams. So this is a tough one. Rams team, Aaron Donald retires, but they still have Sean McVay. They still have Matt Stafford. Uh, we're at home, so, you know, you would think potentially we could we could beat them here. It's it's tough for me, man. It's tough because uh, they still have Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. Like, it's a good team, well-coached team. 
I'm, I'm trying to be conservative. Let's just go ahead and say we lose this game. All right, let's say we lose this game, all right? Uh, moving on to the Seahawks. I don't think the Seahawks are very good anymore. I, we have Shane Waldron, their former OC, so, um, you know, I think our roster is better. Uh, Geno Smith is there, but, you know, they have DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, a year older. Defense, not very good. No Pete Carroll. I'm going to say it's a dub for the Bears. I think I think the Seahawks aggress this year. They kind of go into a little bit of rebuild mode. Then we got the Jags with Trevor Lawrence and company, and uh, they did lose Calvin Ridley, uh, but this is a potential playoff team, man, with Doug Peterson and company. I'm going to say uh, they're more experienced. I'm going to say L. I'm going to say we lose to them, okay? So we lose to the Jags. Then we got the Titans, all right? And I'm trying to be conservative here, guys, so just work with me. We got the Titans next. And the Titans, um, as we all know, they kind of just went crazy in free agency, right? Added a bunch of pieces. Calvin Ridley's there, Tony Pollard. They traded for Legereus Sneed. They signed Lloyd Cushenberry. Like, they went all out to support Will Levis, their uh, rookie going to the second-year quarterback now. Um, so that roster on paper is really solid. Um, but are they good enough for us to, you know, lose to them? Uh, so right now, again, just being ultra conservative, I'll say, you know, fine, we lose to the Titans, okay? Uh, it just worked with me here. Let's keep going. The Panthers, this is this is an easy dub here. The Panthers, still not very good. The roster's not very good. Ryan Poles, company owned the Panthers. We own the Panthers. So let's go ahead and mark this as a dub. Moving on, New England Patriots. I think we beat the Patriots as well. They're not very good going to rebuilding year. They're also going to draft a rookie quarterback. So I'm going to go ahead and say we beat the Pats. All right, let's move on to the road, okay? So on the road, we got the Lions, which I said, said we'll split with them. So that's a loss. The Packers is a loss. The Vikings is a dub. Cardinals, not very good still. I think uh, they'll add some pieces, but I still think uh, we can beat them. Porous defense, so that's a dub. Uh, then we got the 49ers. That's a loss, right? Uh, they went to the Super Bowl last year as a stacked team, so we're going to lose that one. Texans, also very solid roster. CJ Stroud going to rookie, a second year uh, after a fantastic rookie year. D'Amico Ryan's a good coach. Like, that defense is very solid. That's a loss. Uh, then you got the Colts. I'm going to say it's a dub. The Colts, to me, with Anthony Richardson, um, really, right, I know he's going to be going to the second year, but barely played in this first year because of injury. They don't really scare me. Nothing about the Colts tells me oh, we can't beat this team. I'm going to say it's a dub. Commanders, it's a dub. So that is uh, basically my count here. So let's go ahead and count up the dubs here. So I got the Commanders, Colts, that's two. Cardinals is three. Vikings is four. Then we got the Pats, five. Panthers, six. Seahawks, seven. Vikings, again, eight. And then Lions at nine. So there you have it, nine wins right there. Being ultra conservative, I gave us a loss against the Rams. I gave us a loss against the Titans. I think these are teams that we can beat, but I'm trying to be conservative here and not go crazy. So I'm going to say nine and eight is what the Bears finish next season with the addition of weapons, with the hype and, and production, hopefully that comes with Caleb Williams, with just an improved, more improved defense, with more experience, like, all of those things combined, and I'm going to tell you guys a fairly weak schedule. Like, this is not an intimidating schedule. They should be, if they are healthy, knock on wood, be able to reel off nine wins here. So, But it's a sharp number by Vegas at eight and a half. Let me know what you guys think, man. Leave a comment down below. Was I uh, too conservative, too aggressive uh, for a, a team with a rookie quarterback? Let me know. Leave a comment down below as always. Thanks for watching.